I got a water spot on my shirt because I think I dripped some chocolate or something on there and uh, yeah. In today's video, we are going to break down the simplest way you can start recording a podcast right now. We're also gonna touch on planning and hosting your podcast as well as adding video if that's something that you're interested in doing in 2022. Now we are not audiophiles, which probably is a good reason for you to continue watching this video because we've managed to create an audio and video podcast without being experts in audio. So if you wanna start a podcast this year in 2022, this video might be helpful or at least lay the groundwork for where you need to do a little bit more research when it comes to making a podcast and investing in gear. Before we get into it, a portion of today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare. I have a very exciting announcement to share with you guys later on, but we'll save that for later in the video. Before you start your podcast, you need to come up with a concept. What is your podcast going to be about? And you can't really start content planning until you figure out what you're gonna be talking about or what the niche of your podcast is gonna be. So you're gonna to need to figure out your what and your why. What is this podcast and why am I making it? So I'm gonna use our podcast tuxedo time as an example for today's video. If you didn't know, Chris and I do have a podcast. It's an extension of this YouTube channel and it is linked up here. It is called Tuxedo Time where we wear tuxedos, AKA jogging pants and have unfiltered discussions about video production, life and being a creator. Now you see, I had a little one-liner about what that podcast podcast is about, that's something that you should come up with for your podcast. A one-liner easily describing what your podcast is about. Tuxedo Time used to be a segment on this channel where Chris and I would sit down in front of the camera and have a casual conversation with you guys about something that was happening. And usually this segment came around because we didn't have a vlog for that week. So we thought, you know, let's do a Tuxedo Time episode where we would kind of answer questions or tell a story. And as our YouTube channel kind of evolved, Tuxedo Time, this segment didn't really fit on our channel that well. We wanted to have a place where we could have unfiltered, uncut discussions about things that loosely relate to the pillars in our main YouTube channel, this channel, visuals, travel, and home. And that's why we turned Tuxedo Time, the segment on our main channel to Tuxedo Time podcast edition on a separate YouTube channel. Knowing our what and our why, we are able to start planning content around our podcast. So there's a couple of ways that I come up with ideas for our podcast. The first one being questions that kind of come up in the comment section of this channel that might spark an idea for a podcast or something we wanna talk a little bit more in depth on. The second way we kind of come up with ideas is brainstorming behind the scenes content related to some of the larger projects that we're working on. And three, sometimes there's just a random topic that fits perfectly within those three pillars of this channel, visuals, travel, and home. And so we will talk casually about something related to those pillars. From there, I'll write out a couple of talking points of things I wanna hit on that help guide us through the podcast episode, but not necessarily tie us to a script. Again, it's unfiltered, it's casual, so a few talking points just to keep us on track. Like always, for this, I use Milanote to plan our podcasts and our videos. If you wanna check out a video I did about how we do this, link up here. So obviously, mics are the most important part of making a podcast. Podcasts are audio-based, therefore you need a decent mic to record said audio. Now you don't have to break the bank on this. There's a couple of tricks on how to get the most out of your mic, no matter how cheap or expensive it is. Obviously some mics are gonna be higher quality than other ones, but there are a couple of different types of mics and I'm gonna have Chris explain this. So when it comes to choosing a mic, you need to know the basics of pickup patterns or polar patterns they're also known as, so you can make the right decision for your podcast. So a polar pattern is defined as how sensitive a microphone is to sound with respect to various directions. So the first type of microphone polar pattern we're gonna talk about is omnidirectional. And an omnidirectional microphone will record audio from all directions equally. So an example of this would be the Rode Wireless Go 2. So the second pattern we're gonna talk about is the cardioid pattern. And this kind of mic is slightly directional, but you gotta be careful because it can still pick up some background noises. The Rode Pod mic has a cardioid pattern. So the third pattern we're gonna talk about is the super cardioid pattern. And as the name suggests, it's more directional than a cardioid. And this is like a shotgun mic. These are actually the most popular mics when it comes to filmmaking, but you still need to be aware of some background noise. For example, noises coming from behind your subject because you can still pick those up. An example of this would be, say, the Rode VideoMic NTG. The fourth pattern we're gonna talk about is the bi-directional pattern. So this mic will pick up audio from both in front of and behind the mic. An example of a mic with this functionality would be the Yeti mic. But the Yeti mic actually has a selectable feature between cardioid, bi-directional, omnidirectional, as well as stereo pickup patterns. So it's a bit of a jack of all trades. So this information should help you get started. There's a whole lot more we could talk about from a technical standpoint, 
but we're not going to because this video is about getting you started the fastest way possible and the simplest way possible. So I'm gonna break down four very simple ways you can start recording your podcast using things that you might already have. These might not be the best or you know most perfect way to start a podcast, but I think in my opinion, they are the most accessible. The first one for the solo podcast, we're talking about a USB mic. So this is where you have one mic attached to your computer and you record directly into your computer. The second one is the use what you got podcast. So you have your phone, you start an audio clip, you get that mic close to your mouth and you start recording your podcast right on your phone. Now that might not be the best quality, but it is a good option to get you started to see if you even like making a podcast or to get you used to talking in a podcast setting. Number three is the workaround podcast. This is actually how we started our podcast tuxedo time by using video mics to record our podcast. In this option, you can use any mic and camera you have available. You can either just toss away the video recording and just strip the audio out and use that as your podcast. Or if you wanna take the entire file and make an audio and video podcast, this could be a good way to do it. The key here is getting that mic as close to your mouth as possible. Now the investment podcast, where you invest a bit of money into a setup, there's so many different options at different price points here, but I'm going to share what we use because I believe in it and I think it's amazing. So currently we're using the Rodecaster Pro with pod mics on boom arms. And you can see our entire podcast set set up breakdown in the video up here where we talk about everything we use to record and produce our podcast tuxedo time. In my opinion, the Rodecaster Pro setup is the easiest and simplest way to get professional sounding audio for a podcast without spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. If you are podcasting and ready to take your production to the next level, then I highly recommend investing in the setup because it is easy and it spits out a relatively polished podcast right from the board. And usually when Chris and I record, we actually don't edit that audio at all other than cutting out a few pauses, ums and ahs, and things like that. Before we move on, I have a very exciting announcement. Back in December, I shot a Skillshare Originals class with the team and it just went live. It's all about finding your signature style through video and I share some techniques I've learned over the years to develop your own look. And the concepts that I teach in the class also apply to your podcast as well. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of amazing classes. I've been using Skillshare to learn more about filmmaking and interior design. And last year I took Emily Henderson's class on styling your space and found it super inspiring when it came to styling our sets in our studio. They also have tons of other materials like classes on graphic design, super important, as well as more in-depth information on podcasting. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And if you are interested, you can check out my class linked in the description box. Thank you so much, Skillshare. So no matter what mic you're using, there are a few things to keep in mind to get the best sounding audio possible, no matter what kind of mic you're using. So the first one, as we mentioned earlier in this video, and I've mentioned this in a million other videos, is getting that mic as close to the subject as possible. We have recorded some decent audio with a $50 mic just by getting that mic close to our mouth. We're gonna make sure we're speaking into the correct part of the microphone. The further away the mic is from your mouth, the worse it's going to sound. This is me speaking close to the microphone. And this is me speaking kind of far away from the microphone. And this is me speaking really far away from the microphone. To the microphone. To the microphone. So get that mic nice and close to your face. And if you're doing interviews or you have multiple people on your podcast, consider adding a way for each person to record their audio, even if it's just on their phone with that mic nice and close to their mouth. And number two is to set your levels properly. Like an overexposed JPEG, once you clip your audio, it's very difficult to save it, if not impossible. So make sure you set your audio levels properly in your recording device and use headphones to monitor it. Three is to use a pop filter to cut down on plosives. That p p p p p plosive. This is with the pop screen. Plosive. P p plosive. And this is without the pop screen. P p plosive. That sound can be distracting and sometimes can be difficult for your audience to listen to for a long period of time. Um, we have had this issue, so we added these teeny tiny pop screens to our pod mics. If you are hearing those plosives, add a pop filter. And number four is to eliminate background noise. So if you're in a room that has a lot of sound, say the furnace is on, cut the furnace, turn it off, 
or go into a room where the sound is better. If we had to do any voiceovers or anything and we didn't have a proper podcasting setup, we'd actually just take our mics right into our closet and record audio in there. Acoustics are a lot better than an empty room where the sound can kind of reflect around. Okay, so there are tons of options when it comes to editing your podcast. If you're really good and can nail it on like one take, you can kind of fire that audio up right away. But if you're like us, you're probably gonna need to edit your audio because sometimes there's maybe some bad language or some ums and ahs or maybe a little throat clearing moment. <clears throat> that kind of needs to be extracted out. Like I said, tons of options for editing. Here are a couple and you can kind of dive into looking at those to see if they are a good fit for you. Audacity, GarageBand, Adobe Audition, kind of all great options. We use Adobe Audition to edit all of our audio for all of our videos. If you're not using podcast mics or a proper podcast setup, EQing your audio will make a massive difference in how your audio sounds. With the Rodecaster Pro, we don't actually have to do this. It sounds great right off the machine, but if you're using video mics, then think about EQing your audio. This step helps to make your audio clearer and cleaner and a little bit easier to listen to. My friend Donna made an amazing video on how to fix audio really easily. So I'll link that up here if you wanna check it out. And I found it super helpful. We were trying to fix some of our audio during our helicopter series heading east. So shout out to Donna, check out his video. If you're making a video podcast, then you can edit your audio right in Premiere, if that's what you're using, using the Essential Sound Panel. Speaking of video podcasts, this makes the process a little more complicated, but if this is something you wanna do, let's talk about it. Now we have to worry about lights, framing, and audio. If you're used to making YouTube videos, then this is not gonna be a problem for you. Just do your normal setup, and so long as your mic sounds good, it's close enough to your mouth, you're getting clean audio, then you can extract that audio and fire it up as a podcast. And if you're new to making videos, again, we're gonna wanna make sure that mic is as close to your mouth as possible, whether you want it in the shot or out of the shot for your video podcast, that is up to you, it's a stylistic decision. There are tons of options for hosting your podcast, but you wanna make sure that whatever you choose, your podcast is getting pushed out to Apple Podcasts, Google, and Spotify, these are like the main places that people listen to podcasts. So you just wanna make sure that whatever you're hosting on is pushing your podcast out to those platforms. We use Anchor for this. It's free, it's super easy to use. They also have an option where our audience can submit audio notes, which allows us to interact with our community a bit better. And that's kind of a fun little addition to that. Definitely do your research before you sign up for something free to make sure that it's going to match your expectations. Otherwise, here are a couple more platforms that you could look into. Podbean, Buzzsprout, there's tons of other ones. If you have a website on Squarespace, you can host your podcast on Squarespace as well. And if you have a website hosted on another platform, just check to see if you could host it right on your website. Again, submitting your RSS feed for syndication is gonna be key for that podcast showing up on Google, Apple, Spotify, etc. Start with what you have, make 10, 15 episodes, get used to podcasting. Starting is the biggest hurdle. By continuously making things, you figure out what gear you need and don't need, whether it's sustainable and whether you even like it. And this can all happen over time, it's progress. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. AKA jogging pants and my heater just kicked on. Please hold. Use photography analogy for audio. Like how do you add a curve to the audio? Oh, you blew out the audio. I don't know the proper, proper things. My toes are blue because I'm so cold right now.